These batteries are giant! <laughs> I've been trying a lot of different types of batteries to see what kind I think that I should be using. I got a couple 1.3s and a 1.5, and these are all nanotechs. A 1.3, 25 to 50C rating. Now when, when a battery has a range like this, the 25 is usually the continuous and the 50 is usually the burst. So this is really a 1.3 25C battery that can burst up to 50C. This one is a 1.3, same as this one, except this has a 45 to 90C rating. This is a 1.5 and it is a 35 to 70C uh, discharge rating. And I also have this Rhino battery here that I've been using and I've actually had real good luck with it. It's a 1350 but it only has a 25C discharge rating. So what you can do to figure out what your amp output is, is you can actually take your um, the C rating of the battery multiplied by the um, milliamp hour here, or not milliamp hour, by the amp hour, and then you can figure out your amp draw. So here's a Rhino. The Rhino I have does 33 amps. The Nanotex, they can do 32, 58, and 52 amps. Well today I got a new one. This is my first step into the uh, more expensive batteries, the better performing, performing batteries. This is a Giant Power. The Giant Power is usually geared uh, toward boats. That's kind of been their focus in the past, according to one of my friends. <laughs> anyway, so this is a Quad Racer uh, special battery. This battery has a, uh, where'd it go? There it is, 65C to 130C. So this is your continuous discharge, 65C. So when we take the same measurements off of this, this thing has an output, a continuous output of 97 amps compared to the 33 on the on the lower Rhino and Nanotex, even almost twice as much as my Nanotex, the bigger ones, 97. And it can burst up to 180. Now, usually if you have a quadcopter, you're probably running 20 amp ESCs. Well, you're probably running 20 amp ESCs because your motors can't possibly draw 20 amps. And so you wanna have ESCs that are like, you know, too big for the motors. Well, at least that's the way I want to do it. That way the ESCs don't explode. Anyway, so if you have four 20 amp ESCs, the most amp you should really be able to draw is 80 without burning out your ESCs. And 80 is well below this 97. Now, I do know with the Rhino, with the 25C rating on this, when I take off of my quadcopter and I just gun it full throttle right off the bat, right off the bat, the, uh, right off the ground, this thing will, uh, the voltage in this will drop down to like 10.4, 10.5, and my, my low voltage alarm will start going off saying, low battery, low battery. And also, when I land, this thing is like hot. It's not just warm, it's really too hot. And I'm, I'm just kind of punishing this battery just because it takes it. And look, it's not even puffy. It's amazing. Anyway, so what I'm hoping is that this 65 amp or the 65C battery that can output 97.5 amps is going to be more awesome. And when it lands, even after going full throttle, it shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be pushing the limits of this battery because this should be able to output 97 and my quadcopter shouldn't should never draw more than 80 amps off of the ESC just because I know I'm gonna get asked I'm gonna go ahead and do some measurements on this before I go fly 141.2 grams and the size of this battery comes in at 34.4 millimeters by 22.6 by about 88 all right, 89 millimeters. And that's pretty much the entire length of it there. Uh, now inside the package, this battery came with these uh, little giant power stickers. It also came with these directions on how you should treat your battery and how you break in your battery and um, how to charge it and make sure you don't over discharge it. Always use a low voltage alarm and on and on. And it also came inside this kind of box with the uh, foam packaging. And it has this little label on the outside. And they also all came with XT60 connectors. Now, you might be able to get other ones, but XT60 is what I need. So anyway, now we're ready to go fly. The Quad Racer Special. I've done a few test flights with these, mostly just breaking them in like the directions said to. 
and I'll be flying these next and I was just going to show you here's an 1800 it's a 25C and you can see it's already puffy from the uh, way I've been flying this quadcopter and here's the Rhino 1500 I'm going to kind of use this as my baseline to compare the uh, 1500s against this just uh, mostly just compare the temperature so hopefully these come down cool and this one uh, well hopefully it does but I don't have high hopes this is the ET200 I'm going to be doing the test flying on and uh, got the giant power battery in there now. There we go. Got the giant power in, so we'll see how this goes. Just landed. Oops. It just, it just landed and the battery's a little bit warm. Definitely I would not say hot. I would not say hot at all. It's just a little warm. Not bad. Alright, now for the uh, for the baseline, we'll put the Rhino on and see what it does. One thing about that battery, I never did get the low voltage alarm until it hit 10.4 uh, volts, which is what I have my Tyrannus set to. Now they say that if you have a battery with a high C rating, the battery voltage will drop real quick at the end. So you want to set your low voltage alarm a little bit higher than normal. So if you're usually setting it at 10.2 uh, or 10.3, you really want to set it down at like 10.6 or 10.5 and see how you go because when you get down to the 10.5 at least with with this one and my other quad the uh, batteries get down to 10.5 and then they drop down to 10.1 real quick so i try to land about 10.1 or so usually so anyway on to the rhino pack we'll see how this goes this is the 1500 It's warmer than the other battery was by far. Let me get it off of here. And uh, yeah, it's definitely warmer. But and it's starting to puff a little bit. And I landed it at 10.2, 10.1, somewhere in there. And uh, yeah. Anyway, that's the Rhino battery. Overall, I think I'm going to like these 65C batteries. Uh, way better than these 25 Rhinos I've been flying. This one's still warm and it's just keeping my hand warm. It's, it's a little chilly out here right now. But these 1500, 65 to 120C uh, rated batteries, these are the 1500s. And they're the uh, quad racer uh, special ones. These are pretty nice. They also have some 1300s available. But uh, these are from Mojo Racing, and I'll have some links down in the description where you can pick up these 1500s or the 1300s if you're interested. If you're trying to, if you're thinking about trying a better battery than the old 25C or 30C battery is going to stuff up your game. Anyway, I really like these. One other thing uh, I noticed about these is even near the end of my flight, these things are still outputting enough power that I can really feel it taking off in the uh, in the straightaways. These rhinos, not so much. They get kind of low on the juice, and then they. Uh, I don't know. Not so good anymore. Anyway, Giant Power Batteries. Check them out. We had a drone racing event yesterday and I took my ET200 with the Giant Power 1500 milliamp hour batteries. Now I thought they might be a little too heavy for racing, but turns out they're not really that bad. I, I was kind of planning on getting some 1300s, but the 1500s is what I ended up with, and I'm actually kind of glad I got these. They fly a little longer than the 1300s do, and you have a little bit more power coming out of them. The only problem was I had is that this was too fast. I actually ended up getting the fastest lap time after the competition was over, so I didn't get any credit. 
But anyway, this is the ET200, and if you're gonna buy one of these, I recommend you get a couple extra arms because I was flying this one pretty quick and I nailed the gate and it broke the arm. I don't know if you can see it in there, but inside there, where are you looking? There we go. It kind of broke in there. Anyway, giant power batteries. These things, <laughs> they're 65 to 120 C, and I tell you, I, I'm really impressed. I usually don't get very excited about batteries, but I think when you actually decide you're going to step up and buy like good batteries and good meaning like more than the 25 35 c rated batteries step up if you step up into like the 65 and better you're going to notice a big difference especially if you've been flying a lot if you're just learning to fly you know you're probably better off getting some cheaper ones and then getting these when you think you're good because these <laughs> these are very good batteries anyway if you have any questions about this quadcopter or the battery or uh, drone racing, let me know because I love it all. Anyway, thanks for watching.